The first time new car buyers meet their steeds is at the dealership. When RPM TV gets a new long-term car, it's usually delivered to our offices. However, this time, we've tried to do something a little bit different. Our brand new long-term car is an Isuzu KB, but instead of waiting for it up in Joburg, we've come all the way down to Port Elizabeth, where, of course, the Isuzu KB is built to meet up with our new long-termer and to drive it all the way back to Johannesburg. Our KB300 double cam was born at the General Motors South Africa assembly plant in Struendale near Port Elizabeth, where the company produces a full range of Isuzu KB models in left and right-hand drive. The plant not only serves both the local and export markets, stringent quality control ensures world-class products built with pride to exacting standards. Watching the RPM TV Isuzu being assembled also reminded us just how much effort goes into producing one of these vehicles, let alone thousands a month. Our new long-termer is a manual transmission KB300 LX double cab 4x4, resplendent in switchblade silver. With its alloy wheels and chrome detailing, it cuts a fine figure with a design that finds a good compromise between smart, smooth lines and a chunky, rugged shape. But there's a lot more to the Isuzu than cosmetic appeal. One of the reasons why even city slickers like me enjoy having the services of a double cab 4x4 at my disposal is because it gets us to places where normal people simply cannot go. Of course, we're traveling between Port Elizabeth and Johannesburg, and normally that would be a fairly straightforward trip. But because we have this Isuzu, we can choose roads on gravel, we can take little lines on the map, follow them, and see places that normal motorists didn't even know existed. Our route included some remote gravel tracks between Craddock and Hofmeyer, far enough off the beaten track to savour the big sky beauty and the desolation of the seemingly infinite landscapes. The Isuzu took it all in its stride while cosseting us in comfort. Buckies and especially double cams have come a long way since these vehicles started out as pure utility machines. As you can see, the interior very luxurious, very well equipped, uh, colored touchscreen display, multifunction steering wheel, leather upholstery, in fact, everything you'd expect of a passenger car. And that in the context of a much more utilitarian, certainly more versatile double cab vehicle. It's that flexibility that makes top-end double cabs such as the KB300 so popular. It has all the mod cons that matter, linked to the convenience of two extra doors and spacious accommodation at the rear. But as the deep load box proves, it's still a workhorse at heart. Producers of double cab 4x4s have to tread a fine line to find just the right compromise between comfort, luxury and refinement on the one hand, and of course durability, reliability and 4x4 capability on the other, because the buyers of these vehicles expect to experience almost passenger car-like levels of comfort when they use the vehicle around town, but also want it to cope with the roughest of terrain when they go 4x4ing. The Isuzu KB has always had a very good reputation when it comes to refinement, but I have to say this latest version has gone a little bit in the other direction. In other words, it does feel more like a gung-ho 4x4, but when you're traveling on tar, like we have quite extensively on this trip so far, you do find that it is a little bit on the firm side. We'll be playing around with tire pressures a little bit to see if we can improve um, those situations, and of course, the vehicle does cope very well with 4x4 terrain. Another upside is that the Isuzu isn't scared of hard work. It's credited with a full one-ton payload despite being a double cab and the ability to tow an unbraked trailer of up to 750 kilograms. No wonder the suspension is beefy and while the ride is firm, the handling is composed and the steering accurate. But what about the drivetrain? This is Isuzu's KB300 4x4 flagship, which means it's powered by a 3-litre four-cylinder engine delivering 130 kilowatt of maximum power linked to a nice and healthy 380 newton meters of torque. The gearbox, a five-speed manual, there is also the option of an automatic gearbox. And of course, this is a four-wheel drive unit, which means you get to select between rear-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high range, and four-wheel drive low range when things get really tough. On tar, the Isuzu feels brisk and responsive with ample mid-range punch. The five-speed gearbox makes the most of the engine's wide torque spread, but it remains a bucky and not a sports car. 
We've covered about 600 kilometers since leaving Port Elizabeth, and even though we've got some way to go until we reach Johannesburg, our final destination, there's been ample time at this point already to get a real feel for what this Isuzu KB is all about. And it was quite a nice, dramatic backdrop in terms of Harib Dam and its dam wall. At the moment, we've driven on tar and dirt, we've driven highway, we've driven country roads. We've really had a, a good opportunity to put this vehicle through its paces in a variety of road conditions. And even though we think that it could be a little bit more comfortable, it certainly has lots of pep. The fuel consumption, not a good thing to measure at the moment because we've been driving up and down for the camera. But um, I have to say that I'm starting to enjoy this KB and I think the 12 months ahead are going to be very interesting and very enjoyable indeed. The 3 litre turbo diesel engine offers ample urge even if it isn't the smoothest or the most powerful out there, thanks in part to the well stacked ratios of the 5 speed manual gearbox. The KB's low range makes it a Packer 4x4, while the well stocked cabin mixes convenience with luxury and space. However, the ride is firmer than expected. 